Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a ton of anti-MLM content. I have deep dives into different MLM companies. There's an entire MLM top fails series where I show you videos and reels and photos of things that people in these companies will post and then we'll react to them together. And then videos like this one, MLM horror stories. These are your own personal experiences that you have sent in to me and I read them for a video. I do upload at least three videos a week. So if any of this kind of content sounds interesting to you, I would love if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video, consider leaving me a comment. All of those things really do help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Additionally, if you ever have your own horror story that you wanna send in to me, all you have to do is send me an email and the instructions for that are down in the description box below. But enough of all the intro stuff, let's get into these stories. This one says, hi Hannah, I'm thoroughly enjoying your anti-MLM content. I only recently learned that the Kirby Vacuum Company operates on an MLM model, which made me realize that I have something of a horror story to share. I hope it's worth a read. At the end of 2004, I was in college and looking for a job that would work around my class schedule. I had just left an inbound call center, which has its own horror stories due to the soul sucking work environment. I found a listing for a vacuum sales job and went to an interview that was really more of a sales pitch for a water filtered vacuum. My fellow interviewee and I both told the interviewer, we'll think about it and get back to you. And then we bailed, exchanging brief looks of relief as we ran away to our cars. That made me a bit wary of the next now hiring listing I found in the newspaper because it also involved a vacuum. But I read through the job description and figured I should at least check it out. I called the hiring manager Mac, not his real name, and asked for more details. He said that the job was quote, customer service and a bit of manual labor, which amounted to answering customer questions about the product as well as loading and unloading their delivery vans. That sounded safe. I said I was interested and he invited me for an interview, which went well. I then attended a week long unpaid group training session between Christmas and New Year's, where I learned more than I ever wanted to know about Kirby vacuums, which honestly are impressive machines, but overpriced. I have heard that, that Kirby vacuums aren't terrible and that lots of people have them and they say they last for years, but yes, very, very expensive. Mac repeatedly assured me that the training was for everybody and that he did not expect me to be a part of the sales team. He also assured me that he would honor my preferred schedule of 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. He then informed me that I needed to attend a team meeting on Monday morning, January 3rd of 2005, but it shouldn't take too long. And I agreed because my classes didn't start until the next day anyway. I showed up for the meeting Monday morning. The workplace had a small storefront, a small office area, storage, loading bay, and the training slash meeting room. There were lots of people there, most of whom seemed excited and eager to get going. The other new hires looked a bit bewildered. About an an hour later, the meeting finally began. Mac talked about upcoming promotions for top sellers, like tropical vacations and big bonus checks for almost two hours. Then he announced that it was time to get to work and ushered all of us to the two vans waiting in the parking lot. I protested, but Mac insisted it was part of my job and that we'd need to, quote, take another look at my preferred schedule. Nope, 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 red flags, red flags, run. <laughs> this sounds eerily similar to a story I read for my last horror stories video, where somewhere in like the interview slash training process for this MLM company, they were all rounded up into a van and like driven super far away to actually sell the dang thing. If I'm not mistaken though, the person in the last story didn't remember exactly what MLM it was for, but this one was for Kirby. So now I'm in this van with a dozen people I don't know, half new hires, we drove for 20 minutes. Then the van stopped in some residential neighborhood I'd never seen before and we all got out. Each new hire was paired with someone with more experience. We were told to go door to door and set up appointments for quote, free carpet cleaning demonstrations. If we got that, the real salespeople would go back to demo the vacuum and of course, try to sell one. The vacuum cost the company $1,400 each and any markup was our commission, split between the sellers and the appointment setters. I had no coat on, it was January in Utah, but I I didn't expect to be outside. I followed my trainer guy from house to house for four hours. I said nothing to the few people who answered when we rang their doorbells. We met up with the van and the driver took us to a nearby restaurant for dinner. I had just paid my school tuition and really didn't have the money to buy a meal. I had to sit in the van with the driver who was smoking and looking at some adult magazines he'd brought along. No, 
absolutely not. I am getting secondhand creeps so bad right now. While we waited for the other van to join us, I surreptitiously went into the restaurant and called my roommate, asking him to call me with some fake emergency so I could convince my team to let me go home, which he did. But the driver, who was some kind of supervisor, I guess, told me that we weren't going back until the end of the work day. We went knocking on doors again in another neighborhood. I thought about walking home, but I wasn't even sure where to go other than eastward, and I found out later that would have been an eight mile walk. It was 9 p.m. when we finally called it a day. I'm not kidding, this is so similar to the story that I read the last time. And not to say that I think anything is being plagiarized at all, because these emails were sent virtually the same time and they've just been in my inbox for the same amount of time. But the fact that this is a regular occurrence apparently is extremely alarming to me. Were you on the clock? Like, were you being paid for this? I feel like it's one of those things that really rides the line of legality, but still incredibly shady and not ethical and not okay to be literally kidnapping people and forcing them to work. The next morning I called Mac and I said, I quit. He asked why. I said, because you lied to me. He asked for clarification. I said, you told me I wouldn't have to work Mondays except for that meeting, but you kidnapped me for 12 hours yesterday. You told me I'd be talking to customers and loading products, but you had me doing door-to-door -door sales. You lied and you wasted my time, I quit. He said he was sorry I felt that way and he started to ask me if I'd be willing to reconsider, but I hung up. We love this so much. Way to be assertive, way to stick up for yourself and way to just be factual. Like you lied to me. You told me it was this. It wasn't. It was this. And I'm not down for that. And hanging up on him is just the icing on the cake. A few months later, I got a job at a Best Buy where I sold computer equipment and earned a flat wage. Best Buy employees are non-commissioned. I liked that because people came to me to buy stuff they actually wanted. <laughs> and my paycheck was the same whether they bought something or not. While working at Best Buy, I had four customers try to get me into their MLM. They all started their pitch by asking whether I liked my job, followed by a comment about how I'd be a great fit for an opening they had. One was Legal Shield, the other were probably Amway or Primerica, but I never found out for sure because they wouldn't tell me the name of the company. They insisted I needed to come to the presentation first, and I'd already learned to avoid any more opportunities like that. I passed Max Kirby shop about once a week, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I enjoyed watching it slowly shrink and then disappear as he sold off parts of the building to other businesses. Thank you for your no-nonsense approach to MLM stories, reactions, and explanations. You're able to show how bad the companies are without shaming the people involved in them. And that's what keeps me coming back for more. I love, love, love this comparison of like selling Kirby vacuums in an MLM versus being a Best Buy employee. And the fact that both of those situations, they are sales, they're pretty similar in their job type. The only difference is that at Best Buy, like you said, you're selling something that's desirable, that people want, and you're getting paid, so all good things. And then what you mentioned about people trying to recruit you but not telling you the name of their company, this happens all the time. Because what they don't want you to do is they don't want you to go home and Google it. My biggest piece of advice for people who are approached by some kind of opportunity is to ask for the company name and not engage in any other conversation until you get that company name. The sheer fact that they are dancing around that and that they're not willing to openly admit who they work for and what they're trying to recruit you into is seriously the biggest red flag of all time. There is a reason that they are not giving you that information willingly and it's because there's so much bad information out there about that company and they don't want you to come across that information before they have a chance to pitch you first. Thank you for sending in this email. You seem like a very assertive person. I love the way that this was written and let this be a great example for us that if something doesn't feel right, we need to stand up for ourselves. This story says, hey Hannah, I love your channel and have been watching all of your videos the past couple of days. I've had a few huns reach out to me and try to sell me on the idea, but for the most part, I've been able to ignore the MLM community. I'm just fascinated on how people get sucked in, not in a judgmental way, but from an educational perspective kind of way. I just realized watching through your videos, I had my own MLM experience with a family member. I am the exact same way. I am fascinated by how people get sucked into these things and what makes them stay for as long as they do. And exactly like you said, it's not a judgmental thing. It's just like a psychology kind of thing and like a cult tactic and a manipulation kind of thing. I preface this with saying that my mother is a nice person. She had a rough life, has struggled with a pill addiction, and it really took a toll on our relationship. When I was a kid, she lost custody and went from my sole parent, seeing my dad every other weekend, to my my parent who had to have supervised visits. It wasn't easy for either of us. My dad was okay, but both of my parents didn't know how to parent. With all of this in mind, I'm a young adult about to get married in April of 2022. I have two cats, a wonderful future husband, and we bought a house. Everything
everything has improved for me. That's all incredible. I'm so happy to hear that, especially the two cats. My mother and I are still repairing the years of damage done by her actions and addiction. She has trouble respecting boundaries, but like I said, work in progress. While she is a person with flaws, she's still my mother and very vulnerable as a single woman who lives alone in another state. She works in home healthcare and has very limited social circles. This is where the nightmare begins. My mom had started telling me how she was involved with Pampered Chef. And honestly, at first, I thought there was little to no harm. It's her money and time. I really don't care how she spends it. Plus, I thought this would be a great opportunity for her to meet some people locally. Well, little did I know it would affect me. Every Christmas, she would tell me to look through the catalog and I could pick out stuff that I liked as I love baking and cooking. Most of the stuff is cheap and not worth the money, so I politely declined and moved on. She would give me some of the most off the wall useless stuff while others I used daily like measuring cups or little glass prep dishes. Whatever it was, I would be grateful for the gift and either kept it or trashed it, recycled it if possible. But when she started Pampered Chef without my knowledge, I hit the roof. So here's how it went down. The rest of your email is like screenshots and bullet points. So I'm gonna try my best to like present it in the most logical way. The first bullet says screenshots one and three. She created a Facebook group titled Lauren and Tiana's Spring fling and invited people she knew and some of my friends and my fiance's mother without my knowledge. I was getting texts and messages from people like, what is this thing that your mom was doing? And I was like, I have no idea what you're referring to. I was floored. I have attached some screenshots so you can see how this all went. Okay, so this is a text exchange between you and your mom. Your mom says to you, hi, I got my days mixed up. You're going to get a link from my Pampered Chef consultant, Stacy. Select the link and you can invite your friends. Since you are my co-host, you will get all rewards made between us. The rewards go towards whatever you want to buy. No one is obligated to buy anything. In the future, if you want to host a party, you will get 10% off any purchase from anyone hosting a party, including you. When the party starts, just read each message. You and I do not answer questions or play games. It's fun. I will buy what you want under $100. And then the next screenshot is you getting a notification on Facebook saying that your mom has invited you to this private group for her pampered chef party. Fast forward of days politely and nicely telling her no, I finally had to be more aggressive and mean about it, which I try not to do because it always starts a fight. Note that in the screenshot that she mentions Allie, who is my third cousin a year younger than me. My mom has a meltdown and starts saying that she's going to give away all this stuff to Allie so I don't have bad memories of her. So it looks like you respond back to her and you said, I really don't want to do this mom, but thank you for the offer. And she says, well, I cannot take your name off the party. Go online and pick out a birthday gift under hundred. I will give you money for your birthday. I'm sorry you don't want to be a part of it. I did not know it would make you feel uncomfortable. If you are interested in shopping for Pampered Chef products, you will get a 10% discount in the future. I sent you an Easter and birthday gift. You should receive it in two days. Then you said back, I don't know how explicit I have to be mom. I don't want Pampered Chef invitations. I do not want people associated with it to have my contact info. I do not want you using me as a way of marketing things. I just do not understand why you do not understand that. I understand what the brand is and its purpose. I tried telling you nicely, but now I have to sound rude. Stop doing it for me. Then your mom says, when I die, I will give all of my products to Allie so you will not have bad memories of me. I will make sure Stacy will never call you. I hope you will never disappoint your friends when they start having their own parties. And then you said, Jesus Christ, mom, it's not about having bad memories of you. It's literally you not respecting my wish to not participate in it. And you still did what you did here. I have the right to say no, and you don't have to agree with my reasoning, but I would expect a level of respect when giving out my information. I would never sign you up for something without your consent. And if you said no, I would understand. I'm sorry you feel that I have disappointed you. I don't feel that I have. I feel you created expectations with this event that I didn't fulfill, hence your disappointment. I have already informed Stacy that I do not want to be involved with any of this going forward. I wish you would have just taken my answer as no, and none of this would have been an issue. Fast forward a couple more days, I go to check our mail at our apartment. This is before we bought the house last year. And lo and behold, I have a yellow envelope addressed to me from someone I don't know. I get this pit in my stomach. Note here, trigger warning for SA and stalking. My ex-boyfriend who I was in a seven year relationship with on and off since middle school stalked me for years after I ended it my second second year of college. I had not heard of him since the start of the pandemic. In that time, I had one serious boyfriend and was getting engaged to my current boyfriend. Like this dude would not stop. He would drive by my house. He would text, call, email, use other people to talk to me and even found me on LinkedIn. He SA'd me when I ended it. I am traumatized that he would find me again. Getting a package in the mail from someone named Stacy who lived in the nearby state was scary. Most of my family knows the full story of what happened with the ex, but even those who don't know 
know that he stalked me and he should be nowhere near me. Another note, getting a restraining order wasn't in the cards because his dad was someone powerful in the police force within our county and it would have been impossible to get anyone to believe me. I was discouraged at first, but I cared more about what would happen to my family if I went public with it than the consequences of having him pop up somewhere. So with all that being said, this envelope from Stacy with my name and address scared the hell out of me. I keep tabs on him to this day so I can be sure that he is nowhere near me. He happened to live in my city at the time and I started to panic. I opened this envelope and it's a note from Stacy and a catalog for Pampered Chef. I went from panic to rage. I could have cussed out Stacy and my mother at that moment. My email to Stacy was short and to the point. Don't use my name to associate to you or any of your products. My mother did all of this without my permission. Do not contact me going forward. It was a nightmare. She responded back with apologies, but I didn't bother to read the email because it didn't matter. The boundary had been crossed and I was livid. I had an online party in my name that my mother uninvited my friends and my partner's mother to. I was embarrassed and hurt. She really didn't mean to traumatize me and she saw her act as being nice or helpful. She didn't take no for an answer and instead made her own decisions and expected me to accept those. Moral of the story, don't be afraid to say no and to say no rudely. You have the autonomy to make these decisions for yourself. And while Pampered Chef might not be the worst MLM out there, they still suck people into their cult-like behaviors. To this day, she has never mentioned or given me Pampered Chef as a gift and we have moved on as life does. I also included a picture of my cats and thanks for creating a space to share my story. The really sad thing about this is that there's not a picture of your cats. The only attachments on here are of your screenshots, but that's okay. Feel free to send me the cats later. And as you know, if you watch my videos for a while is that I don't pre-read these stories before I'm filming. And it's just kind of coincidental that this story fits perfectly after the last one. Thank you for sending this to me because again, it points out exactly how important it is to stand up for yourself. And unfortunately, sometimes that does force you to resort to being more blunt or more assertive or more rude because of situations like this, where it's kind of relentless because you're trying so hard to get your point across in like a kind and neutral way as to not create tension, but the message is just not being received. So again, a great lesson in just being assertive, stating very clearly what you expect, what you want and what you will not tolerate. And I'm sorry for this relationship with your mom that it had to come to that point, but here's to hoping that Pampered Chef never interferes with your relationship going forward. This next story says, hey Hannah, I've had a few minor run-ins with MLMs through family and friends. Number one, Mary Kay. My stepmom has always been involved in Mary Kay since before her and my dad got married when I was about 10 and she still is. I remember her having a couple drawers full of products and samples growing up. As I started having part-time jobs in high school and college, she would text me every now and then asking if I wanted to buy anything. I always had dry skin and she would recommend different lotions from Mary Kay. She always said I was getting her discount and I figured if I had to buy skincare, it might as well be from her. Her and my dad were always checking on my account through college so they could transfer money for living expenses. She would text me asking if I wanted anything towards the end of the month and if I said yes, she would pull the money straight from my account. Even after I started to get into anti-MLM content, I bought a few things because I felt guilty. Then I got a few bad breakouts, like painful cystic acne on my skin. Stress probably contributed, but I've had the issue again since I switched to a different skincare, one that is cheaper, of course. She asked a couple times since then if I wanted to buy something, but she takes no thanks for an answer. That's good. I'm glad that she's not pressing you or prying you on that. And this is very interesting, this dynamic of like, oh, I'll just take the money directly from your bank account. I don't think I've ever heard that before. That's crazy. Although a couple years ago for Christmas, my husband took me for a little shopping trip for my gift. I picked out some makeup because I was starting to get more into it. My stepmom was staying with us. And when I told her what we bought, she was a bit indignant. She told my husband to come to her the next time he wanted to buy me makeup. I don't bother getting into my anti-MLM stance with her. I don't think it would do any good. I did end up with some Scentsy Air Freshener, Mary Kay hand lotion, and a spice mix from from Pampered Chef in my stocking this year. I swear she keeps the whole industry in business. Now this has come up time and time again in these stories of like, oh, I get stuff for gifts all of the time. Like my stepmom, my aunt, my grandma, whoever it is, we all have that one person in our lives that like we really do feel like are single-handedly keeping this industry together because they're like supporting all of their MLM friends and like purchasing things from them. And then doing exactly this is pawning it off as gifts throughout the year. Number two, Young Living. My step 
stepsister was in Young Living for a while. She's a nurse. She would rub oils on her small children and say it kept them calm. I bought one bottle of orange oil from her. She told me it would make my teeth whiter. I honestly can't believe I fell for that one. I ended up using it to make homemade cleaning solutions smell good. Hey, there you go. That's a good use for that. Here's what I need to know. Did she recommend that you would put the oil onto your teeth? Mix it in your toothpaste, ingest it? Like what part of this is going to make your teeth whiter? Because my first instinct as somebody who has like very sensitive teeth, I swear to you, if I eat too many fruit snacks, I get like sensitivity on my teeth. I could not even imagine putting a citrus essential oil on there. It makes me cringe. Number three, Color Street. I don't know why she left Young Living, but now my stepsister is doing Color Street. She posted something on Facebook when the COVID shutdowns were first happening and said something like, nail salons are closed, so buy Color Street from me. The idea that Color Street was profiting while COVID was affecting real small businesses makes me so angry. I never accepted her Facebook group invite, so thankfully she hasn't ever pitched to me. Yes, MLMs are having a heyday with the pandemic, especially right at the beginning when there's so much uncertainty and like the things that you normally have access to, you don't anymore. And this whole like work from home situation is really on the rise. It really is disgusting that these businesses are kind of thriving in a sense. Some people in the businesses are thriving. The people who were in the MLMs at the beginning of the pandemic and were able to recruit a ton of people out of fear, those people are doing pretty well today, which is truly disgusting if you think about it. Number four, Amway. And finally, a friend of mine from college is an Amway. I was actually bummed because she had recently moved to the same city as me and I had hit her up first before I realized she was an Amway. Then I heard from a few mutual friends that she was going around with the sales pitch. Eventually she got to me and texted me that she had a business opportunity and asked if I would hop on a call. I kindly told her that I would be happy to talk, but I was not interested in MLMs and I didn't want to waste either of our time if she wanted to talk about Amway. She got pretty defensive and compared investing in Amway to paying for a college diploma because you aren't guaranteed money and it requires hard work. I think her upline was coaching her because her and I both have advanced degrees that led to decent jobs. So it was just a weird example to pick. And obviously it's not even close to the same thing. Yes, you get it. Like going to college, getting a diploma, not the same thing as joining an MLM. It is true that going to college is an investment, but in my opinion, it's a worthwhile investment to have a degree that opens up so many other job opportunities and doors for you. Once you have that degree, nobody can take that away from you and you will always have that path if you want it. And yeah, how weird that she did go to college, she did get a degree and she did get a good job out of it, but that's the example she chooses. Amway is so cringe. I randomly had two other people I know tell me they had a random encounter with the same friend and her husband at a grocery store. They go up to people and compliment their shoes to start a conversation. So weird. I hope you enjoyed my stories. Thankfully, I've never been sucked in, but I've still witnessed how awful they are. Thank you for doing what you do. Then you sent me a follow-up email and it says, I'm following up with screenshots of my conversation with the person in Amway. I don't think I did that well and this conversation mainly exhausted me. And this text conversation is pretty long. There's eight screenshots here, but I do want to read through them because I think it does expose some of the tactics that people in MLMs will use to try and like relate to you and then pitch a little bit and then relate to you a little bit more and then pitch. But this conversation kind of derails towards the end and I think it's important to share it. It all starts by you saying, hey, sorry, I missed your call the other day. I was out of town for my brother's wedding. And she said, hi, Oh, congratulations to your brother. That's awesome. I saw some of the photos on social media. Very happy for you and your family. No worries though. Is there a good time for us to hop on the phone for a few over the next couple days? And you said, thank you. So you're an Amway, right? If that's what you want to talk about, I don't want to waste your time. I'm not interested in selling or buying any of their products. I just stay away from MLMs in general because I think they have really predatory business practices. There have been studies that have shown 99% of people in MLMs lose money. They're just set up so the people on the bottom are being taken advantage of and I don't like being a part of that. Let me know if you want any information or resources about this and I'd be happy to send it to you. Best of luck, girl. She responds back saying, hey, I was working yesterday and today and was with my husband's family last night, so just now reading this. <laughs> yes, Amway is one of our partnerships along with many other companies like Starbucks, Office Depot, and Apple. Does she work somewhere else too? Or is she working with Amway and something else? I understand where you are coming from. I also had similar preconceived notions about multi-level marketing before I really got to know what it specifically is that the business partners we work with do. My husband and I and every one of the people we work with have made money through our business model. And 
honestly, we make more money than the good friend of mine who introduced us to this business opportunity because we have an unlimited stair-step breakaway business model where whoever is doing the most work gets paid accordingly rather than the people at the bottom being taken advantage of. I do appreciate your concern. I've seen a lot of the stuff that people post online. There is bad about literally everything online, so I try to make my own educated decisions based on the people I'm actually working with rather than people I don't even know behind a screen. To be honest, here it is. It's a little insulting to me that you are assuming that my husband and I are unable to determine if a business concept is legitimate or not. It sounds like you've learned a lot. I'm just wondering, is that from experience in this area or more so from online searching? Like she tries to relate to you. She tries to make it seem like she gets where you're coming from. And then it turns bitter like real quick. Also, Cooper is rubbing himself all over the tripod and shifting it. So sorry about that. Come up here. Come on. Do you think this cat understands how much he's loved? Like, does he even know? Do you even know? Like, do you even understand it? Okay, bye. You responded back, I've had family that have done MLMs in the past and I've done research when people have approached me. I didn't mean to insult you. I just think it's easy to be drawn in by friends. These businesses exist because they make a good sales pitch. I'm sorry to hear that some of your family maybe had a bad experience in an MLM before. I know what you mean. I've had family members who have had bad experiences at different colleges, but it just didn't affect my decision to pursue college myself because I know that every school is different and it would have been silly for me to put all colleges in a box just because someone I know didn't have a good experience with one or two universities. And I will tell you this, my husband and I were never given some sort of sales pitch about the opportunity we took a hold of. We actually went through a qualification process to even be offered mentorship by the couple we work with. It sounds like you have maybe had some bad experiences with MLMs before, that's just not my experience. And I would never start dialogue with someone about something I I didn't believe was a good thing. Oh, the condescension, things are heating up. You said back, I don't think that's an appropriate metaphor. If studies across all colleges showed that 99% of students who went to colleges across the industry paid tuition, but never went to class, then I wouldn't go to college. I'm not just basing this on one or two experiences. The FTC backs the statistic that 99% of people lose money in MLMs. And then you sent her the link. Then she says, well, my question is, what are the stats of people graduating college and getting a job with their degree? How much debt are they in? Over time, many people have lost money in retirement because of college, just a thought. I appreciate you sharing that article with me. It looks like this was published eight years ago and the data is from anywhere between nine to 18 years old. I don't at all doubt that there are people who don't make money from being in an MLM. I've seen that firsthand. And in my experience, it's usually from people who wanted a quick result and who didn't work hard enough or long enough to create an actual income. This is just like textbook MLM hun speech. In the group of people we work with, anyone who has made a legitimate effort and wants to make money does. My husband and I make money every single month and that doesn't even account for the fact that the products we buy through our business are products that we would buy regardless of if we had a partnership with the Amway Corporation or not. A partnership with the Amway Corporation. So technically we have never even lost money because we'd buy the stuff anyway just from some other store. I appreciate this discussion but we may just have to agree to disagree at this point. Yeah I mean textbook 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 MLM speech. Not being able to successfully refute facts, changing the subject to something completely irrelevant, the classic, well, I make money, the justification of the insane costs that they're spending to stay in this company, all of it, everything about it. I probably could have written that at this point, but I think that you did a good job of balancing, like, here's my concerns and here's why. I do have to say that trying to reason with people in MLMs is never going to be effective. Nine times out of 10, it's going to turn out exactly how this did. Just a whole lot of back and forth, she said, she said, no real conclusion, agree to disagree kind of thing. Something that I do and that I've personally found to be effective is to just say, no thanks. And if they don't leave you alone after that and they ask, well, why not? Then you can start giving your reasoning and little nuggets of information. But most of the time when somebody is pitching you, they just want to know if you're in or not. They don't really care about your reasoning. They don't really care about the facts or the statistics. And so sometimes offering that information to them when they didn't really ask for it, it can't come off as like an attack. I would love an update on if you ever like hung out with this person, if you're friends, you live in the same city. So like, did you move past the situation or was this really all she was in it for? And did it really end at this conversation? 
I would love to know. I would hate to hear that you can't have a friendship with this person because of the Amway thing, but honestly, I wouldn't really be surprised. MLMs come between relationships all the time. This story says, hi, Hannah. Good day from Australia. I hope you, your partner, and the fur babies are keeping well. I discovered your channel after falling down a bit of an anti-MLM rabbit hole during our latest COVID-19 lockdown. The algorithm recommended one of your videos and now I'm obsessed. I really enjoy your methodical, considered, evidence-based approach. Thank you for producing such engaging content. Thank you. Those are very kind words. I really appreciate that. Fortunately, I haven't had a lot of personal experience with MLMs as I don't use social media, and these schemes aren't as prevalent in Australia as they appear to be in the US and Canada. Though I realize that might be about to change, the Monate Huns are coming. Oh, they're already there. <laughs> but I do have one story to share regarding Rodan and Fields. A few years ago, I was working as a traveling trainer slash product specialist for a skincare company. I liked the job, but the travel was becoming exhausting. I would often spend three plus hours a day in the car and I had to fly interstate every couple of weeks. Australia, it's a big place. One afternoon, I ran into a girlfriend having coffee with a friend I didn't know. It had been a particularly grueling day, so I accepted their offer to join them and I ended up having a bit of a moan about my work situation. My girlfriend's friend, let's call her Cindy, started asking questions about my job and became very interested when I told her I was a trainer for a skincare company. She went on to tell me she had her own skincare business and that she was looking to expand and take on another staff member. Wow, so official and yet so very misleading. Cindy was warm, charming, and seemed very savvy, so I accepted her invitation to catch up for lunch and discuss further. I want to be clear, Cindy implied we would be discussing a potential employment opportunity. We didn't get a chance to go into details during that first meeting, but I assume she had her own salon or clinic or potentially even her own product line. Nope. <laughs> when I met Cindy the following week, it turned out she wanted to recruit me to join her Rodan and Fields team. Yeah, talk about going from my own business, I'm looking to take on a new team member, I have my own skincare, to now I want to recruit you for my MLM. I had no idea what an MLM was at the time, but I knew something was amiss when five minutes into the pitch, she started talking about encouraging my family and friends to join under me. She also suggested I leverage my contacts and ask my current customers to switch over to Rodan and Fields, as if that wasn't totally unethical and gross. Weirdly, she also spent several minutes explaining why Rodan and Fields was not a pyramid scheme. By this time, she knew I'd never even heard of the company, so why she thought bringing in pyramid schemes into the mix would convince me to join, I'll never know. Thanks again, Hannah. Wishing you and your family a very happy holiday season. Yeah, this one is a big cringe. Okay, I have a lot of secondhand embarrassment. That's very alarming that she decided to go down the whole like we're not a pyramid scheme route. Hi, Zeke. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Are you just hanging out? We now have two cats in the room. Isn't it funny when you think about how in an MLM, part of your job description is convincing people that you're not in a scam? And just like you said, all that does is set off alarm bells for you. You don't know what an MLM is at this point. You're not familiar with this company, but by virtue of her bringing up that it's not a scam, that should be cause for concern. And the last story for this video is a short one. It says, I was recruited by a friend into the insurance agency known as American Income Life. Before I joined, I was desperate for a job and was told by this friend that they were currently earning six figures as an insurance agent. They said it was super easy too because they didn't do sales. They simply managed insurance accounts for existing companies and helped them sign up new employees to the companies as they were hired in. It sounded too good to be true, so I agreed to join. They informed me that I would be on a team of agents and that I could even help get other agents signed on to help the team grow. My friend told me I would need to pay to take an exam to become an insurance agent, but that I would earn my money back in no time. The exam costs $90. Once I passed the exam, I was told that my job would actually be to go door to door selling insurance plans to new customers and that my income would be based on those sales. How is that okay? They make you take an exam, pay for an exam, and only after that point, they switch up the job to description on you? Like, oh, sorry, you're actually not going to be managing insurance accounts. You're going to be a door-to-door -door salesperson working for commission. I was also told that the person who recruited me would be earning a percentage of those sales, but that I shouldn't be upset because eventually, 
potentially I could manage my own team and earn a percentage of their income. When I protested and said this was not what was advertised, they told me I needed to be a team player and that I should probably join their prayer group so I can learn to be more positive and trusting. I could not get out of there fast enough. I left that day and I did not go back. What a scam slash cult. I was just gonna say, my cult radar is beaming right now. Classic bait and switch. Bait you into it with this, you're in it, they switch it on you. Oh, you just need to pray more. Are you kidding me? A very short but very impactful story, okay? I'm so glad that you listened to your gut and you got out of there as quickly as you could. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories that I have for you for this MLM Horror Stories video. As I said at the beginning, if you have your own story, please do not hesitate to send it to me. I am at a little bit of a backlog right now. These stories that I read today are from like a month ago that they got sent in, but I can never have too many stories. I love that I have a big folder going right now so that I can make these videos more frequently. I can make them longer. So if you would like to send me your story, I would love to have it. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.